tonight I want us just to look for just a few minutes and I want you to turn over in Proverbs. I want you to turn to chapter 15 in Proverbs. And I want us to look at that just a little bit tonight. And I want us to think about the things that we do see. You see, a lot of times you and I have to look on the outside, out in the world, to see those things that's going on to help us understand the things that we're doing with our life. You know, we talked about, about that Sunday. We talked about our mission Sunday in that, but I want us just to continue to think about that as we, as we go through tonight just for a little while. And I want us to think about why do people do such things that we see going on out in the world? Why do they do those things? You know, people ask that question all the time. You know, the world cannot be changed, but the people in the world can be changed. And so we have to look at that. And there's only one way that that will ever take place. And it's a reminder to you and to me and sometimes if we're not careful, we will look at ourselves and you will, we'll look at those things that people are doing out in the world and say how awful that was or is that's going on that we see today. But what about our lives? It was awful at one time because we would have been lost and undone from our Lord and Savior. So that's a reminder to us. As I started out saying, we can all in here say, we're thankful and name things one by one that he's given us this opportunity. He's given us the opportunity to turn our lives over to him. So we look outside at the outside world and see those things that's going on. And as we look in Proverbs, we're looking at, you know, Solomon wrote primarily most of Proverbs. And he quoted about 3,000 Proverbs as he reigned in that. And that we're able to take that and look at that. And not only, but when we look at that, we realize that that was a gift from God. Answered prayer that he was speaking about. You talking about a testimony? We all have one tonight. We all have one that we can speak these things of things that go on in our lives. But I want us to just look at a couple of verses here. And then we're going to look at some more verses pertaining to that. But in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 28 and 29, let's see what he's saying there in those two verses. It says, The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. Now, we've got to think about that just a little bit as we say, well, why do people do the things that they do? Why do we see the things that people do? He's saying in that, he starts off by saying the heart. So, see, we have to look at the heart of an individual. All the things that take place in us is from the inside out. We always gauge people by the outside. We gauge them by their appearance. We, we gauge them by what they have or don't have. We gauge them by what kind of profession they're in or if they don't have one at all. So we gauge people all the time from the outside. Most of the time we, we, we meet somebody, what do they say? That first impression is what's going to always last in their mind because they're looking at the outside and what's going on on the outside. But what does God look at? He looks at the inside of us. You see, the world can't be changed, but the people in the world can. You and I have a testimony tonight if we know him as Lord and Savior that sometime along the way, people looked at us on the outside. And we really impressed them from the outside. But they just didn't know the inside. But it was until the Lord Jesus Christ changed us on the inside do they really see us on the outside now. 
or should be that way, as we talked about that. So when we talk about the heart, it says the heart of the righteous. So everything is going to happen on the inside of us that's going to come out on the outside. You know, what do they say? Whatever you put in is going to come out. It doesn't talk about what's out here. It talks about when you put it in, that's what's going to come out. If you put the things that we say, why do people do the things they do, it's because what they're putting in is the result of what's coming out. But for a believer, it's what's on the inside of us that we have that we put out on the outside. Because, you know, the Bible does talk about that we'll know them by the fruit that they bear. That means... If it's wicked, whatever they sow, they're going to reap. So whatever we see is going to come from the inside. And it's going to eventually come out. But he looks at that. Can you pull up Matthew uh, 15, 8? Matthew 15, 8. Somebody got Matthew 15, uh, 15, 8? Read it. Whoever's got it, read that out. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. If somebody's got it, just read it. You see, that's describing a person that's on the outside. Nothing has ever taken place on the inside. And so we can say things with our mouth, but our what is far from him? Our hearts. It says in that, in Proverbs, it says the heart of the righteous. So that's describing somebody that's already had something inside of them already changed. It's no longer that it's looking from the outside, but he's already knows the inside now. And we all recognize if something takes place on the inside, it was not until something took place on the inside of me that the difference was made. And that's all of us. That's all of us. It, our heart ha has to change. It has to be a total different look and a different way that we are to live in our lives. And he's looking at the inside tonight of all of us here and all of us that's not here. In all that's in the world, he's looking at the heart. What does the Bible say? The heart is most what? Wicked. Unless there's a change that takes place on the inside and then it helps us understand when we look at the outside, if the person just had Jesus Christ in their heart on the inside and it wasn't lip service, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing now. If people had Jesus tonight, there would not be any riots. If people had Jesus tonight, there would not be any killings. If they just had Jesus in their heart tonight, we wouldn't see all the things that we see in the world tonight. You see, because there would be a difference on the inside in who sees the inside. But it's the people that don't care what's on the inside is the reason they do the things they do. And he talks about that also, and we'll get to that just in a, in a minute. So we're talking about the heart, and we're looking on the inside at ourselves as Jesus Christ sees us through and through through and through and it surely makes a difference in our lives it says in there that the heart of the righteous studieth you see now it starts getting to where okay we say that there's a change in our life Jesus now is our Lord and Savior and we're saying now that on the inside of us it's no more just lip service and it's no more just saying these things but actually a change is taking place in our heart. Jesus has come in and he has made a difference in us 
from where we have ever been. It's totally different. What changes? Our thought process. What changes? The way we speak. What changes? The way we walk. All of those things change in our life. And it says in that, the righteous studieth. Now, when you get into that, you start looking at what that really represents. Somebody got Romans 10.10, 10, and somebody look up James 1.19. Alan Mike can pull them up too, but we'll get somebody to look at Romans 10.10. 10. Somebody, somebody have that? Just read it out. Romans 10, 10. You see what it does? You see on the inside with our heart, the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it makes a difference. For the heart, for with the heart, Man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesses is made unto salvation. If our heart doesn't change, our confession that we're doing is, is, is not right. But it's only when we do confess that to the Lord Jesus Christ, it says in that that the heart of the righteous studieth. They studieth. And we're going to see a little bit more about that in James 1.19. Somebody have that? James chapter 1, verse 19. You see what that says? For with the heart... No, we're still there. Read that again, Jessica. That's talking about somebody that should be a born-again believer with their heart. Now it's changed. And now we want to live for the Lord Jesus Christ with all our heart. Now when something comes up, it says that we're going to study that. And it says that you and I will be slow to speak. How many of us are guilty tonight of not being slow to speak? We all are. We all are. I can tell you for a fact, just this week, just this week, I have been put into three different situations that I had to put off for several days before I ever said anything. I was right there. And the devil was saying, sick them, get them, get them, get them. But I kept telling myself and even told some different ones, I don't want to say anything because I know if I say anything, I'm going to say it in the flesh. I already know it. If I say those things, I'm going to say it in the flesh. And that will not represent me, and it will not represent the Lord Jesus Christ. What it will represent is the outside world. It will be coming from the outside. That will not will be coming from the inside. So I knew that it would be better not to say anything at all. And people say, I, I can't stand it. I'd have to say something. And I said, that's exactly what the devil wants you to do, is wants you to say something. But is it, if it's not of God, it's not of God. Right. And it's easy for us to find ourselves in that situation. We probably all have been there just this week. That somebody said something, somebody done something, and it was like, I really want to tell them, but what is that going to do? Will that ever win anybody over to Jesus Christ? No, the first thing they're going to say is, yep, I thought you was that way. It says, and at the heart of the righteous studieth before they give that, that answer or that thought or whatever. 
in all of that. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Oh, we hear all right. We hear the devil speaking as soon as somebody said something. Get them. This is what I'd say. Tell them this. Tell them that. And then we have to be reminded over here about the inside of us that's representing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Does that make it easy? No. Does it make it right? Absolutely. It makes it right that we are to hear what the Spirit is saying. Solomon is saying these things because he's experienced these things in his time. He's saying this. It's some of the greatest things that we can read about people's lives in God's Word that just shows us over and over and over. Solomon spoke all these Proverbs, over 3,000 of them, because he had spoke these things and seen these things work in his life. And that's what you and I are to do is to see. Did those three people think I was weak and they got over on me and I was a pushover? Probably. They probably did. But was it going to be right if I'd done anything any different from that? No, it wasn't. What do they say? Two wrongs don't make a what? A right. What we're to do with our heart on the inside is to do what Jesus Christ tells us to do. It says, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Is that how we find ourselves? Are we, are we really looking on the inside at our heart? Are we really representing Jesus Christ as he says in that? Because he goes on in that, studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Buddy, the three people I were dealing with were pouring out some evil things. They were, they were pouring out some stuff that, that most people would have jumped straddle of them. And I have to be careful because, you know, What do they say? If you think it, you might as well what? Say it. So I have to be even careful not to even think of what I want to say or wouldn't want to say. So I have to just change my mindset and let that go. But so many times we don't do that as believers. We expect that on the outside because there's never been an inside change. But to the ones that are born again believers, there should be an inside change. And it doesn't last for an hour, it lasts forever in knowing Him. Do we get weak? Absolutely. Can He make us back strong? Absolutely. Does He ever see us that we're in a, in a low time in our life and we're on edge? You ever just been worn thin? Don't take much. And I can tell you, we won't, we won't be swift to hear nothing, and we'll be fast to speak everything. And it won't come from where it needs to come from. Solomon tells us these things, but the mouth of the wicked pour out evil things. But then it says in verse nine, 29 there, it says, The Lord is far from the wicked. You see why we want to inside change? You see why we want to be swift to hear what the Spirit is saying and slow to speak so we make sure we say the right thing the right way? I've been taught this a long time ago. Something unspoken can't be, be misquoted. If you don't say anything, something that's never been spoken cannot be misquoted. But everything that we say can be requoted. So what do you want our quote to be? 
when somebody does that, are we just going to be listening to the Spirit, not the devil? And are we going to really study what we're going to say? Do we really look at it from the inside and say, you know, what would Jesus want me to say and how would he want me to say it? He's given us plenty of examples in the Bible. They approached him and said all kind of things. And there's been even times that he didn't even say anything. And then there's been times that he waited and then he said what they needed to hear and he said it in the right way. And he said it in the spirit. And that's what you and I have to do in everything. The Lord is far from the wicked. Can you imagine how sad that is? So far away from the wicked. The world is out there getting further and further and further away from our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a sad thing that the things that they're doing, and he's saying in that, far from the wicked. I don't want to be there. I don't think anybody wants to really be there, but when you reject Jesus Christ and he's not come into your heart, and it says those that are professing with their lips and their mouth, but their heart's far from that, is why we find ourselves where we find ourselves today. There's a lot of evil people out in the world, and they don't mind telling you, and they don't mind showing you they're evil either. But there's a lot of people out in the world that does a lot of the lip stuff, but it's far from their heart. And then there's a lot of people that know that Jesus Christ is the only answer. And they know Jesus Christ is their only hope. And when we allow that to change in us, what are we to die of? Ourself. Because the inside will be changed and forever changed in that and everything and he's the answer he always gives us the right thing to say there is no shame in walking away if we're going to say something outside of God's will there is no shame in that at all Jesus Christ would rather us to walk away from those situations and he had for us to say anything if it's not lining up with his word you and I will never change anybody <coughs> We never will. And it won't last. There will be a false, a false hope if we think we're ever going to change an individual. And we're going to ever change their thought process. The world can't be changed, but the people in it can. Jesus Christ can only change us as individuals. And we have to always remember that, that he is the only one that can come into my heart tonight and change me, that I'll have the right attitude, listen to what he says, be slow to speak, and do the things he wants me to do the way he wants me to do it. You try to program that into me, and that won't work. Jesus Christ changes us within. Within. Tonight, that ought to be our prayer that we, that we ask him tonight. Lord, come into my heart and make sure to cleanse me. Create in me a right spirit, a clean heart and a right spirit that I can go through each and every day that when those people confront me and say all of those things and try to get under my skin. There's a lot of people out there that will... They know when they get under your skin, and the more they get under it, the more they get under it. What's our response? What we hear and what we say is going to depend on what's in our heart. And 
people gauge us by that. There's been a lot more people won over to Jesus Christ by never responding than it has that people respond in a negative way, the way the devil wants them to respond. That's why a lot of our churches are not full today because people has already saw the outside world. They knew that they were, wasn't going to hear anything, but they were going to speak a lot. And it never wins anybody over. What it does is turns them away. It makes it even worse. It makes it even worse. In Daniel chapter 9, and when I look at that and I think about that, that can you pull up Daniel chapter 9? You can? Okay, pull that up. When you, when you look at Daniel chapter 9, that's his prayer. That's his prayer that he's speaking. And I just want to share this, this little bit with you as we think about praying tonight to our Lord and Savior. This is Daniel speaking. Daniel chapter 9, verse 3 and 4 and 5 there, all the way down to 10. To 10. But he says in 3, I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sockcloth and ashes. And I pray unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercies to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the precepts and from the judgment. <coughs> Neither have we hearkened unto thy servant, the prophet which spoke in thy name to our king and our princes and our father and our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteous belongs unto thee. Dave, Daniel here was even talking about his own self. You see, when we find ourselves that way, it makes a big difference what's on the inside of us. He even said in that, we have sinned. He didn't say, have mercy on all these people around me that can't get it right, that won't do right. He says, we. He included himself in that. We we, we have sinned and have rebelled. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication. Tonight, that ought to be our prayer tonight. That we would say, God, mold me, make me. Mold me and make me in what you want me to be. Help me as I go out and I face the world and the things of the world that I will constantly remind myself that I need to listen to you because my flesh is so weak, but thou art so strong that everything I do will bring glory and honor to your name. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. You see, the world's not looking at that, but the church has got to look at that. And it makes a difference. You see, the, the lost and the dying world out there don't know what we're talking about tonight. But people that's born again believers knows what we're talking about tonight. Has to be a reminder to us wouldn't ask you to raise your hand for nothing in the world, but I know that there's been times in the very short future that we have said something we shouldn't have said. Not only that, but we said it in a way we shouldn't have said it also. And it never brought honor and glory to our Lord and Savior. 
And we've got to find ourselves that as we do, as Daniel was doing with his prayer, Lord, just confess, I have fell and fell short. And I need you to make a difference in my life on the inside. Not the outside. If I don't ever look great at all, if I don't ever dress up great or whatever, what I need is on the inside. That the whole world may see. He says, go out and spread the gospel all over the world. Be a shining light in a dark and dying world. And we only do that from the inside out. We only do it from the inside out. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, once again for everyone that's here, Lord. God, it seems, oh, so few tonight. There's so many empty spots. It's so many empty spots, Lord. But God, one great thing about it tonight. You said where there's two or three, you're gathered in the midst, Lord, and we believe every part of your word tonight. God, I pray, Lord, for everyone that's here and the families that they represent. God, we all have needs and we all have struggles. And we all have things going on in our life. But as Daniel came to you, Lord, and said that we have all sinned, and we've rebelled, Lord. God, help us, Lord, as your people, your children that you call us your children tonight. Those that know you have accepted you and there's a change that's taken place in their heart, loves you with all they have and all that they are. Father, I pray tonight that you would be with each one of us as individuals. Lord, that you would create us in that clean heart and that right spirit that we may face a dark and evil world out there. God, that we know that one day that you're going to judge. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be swift to hear what your Spirit is telling us tonight, Lord, in everything that we, we do, Lord. Lord, we make decisions every day and every night. God, help us to make those decisions that's pleasing to you. And, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would continue to guide our church, Lord. God, not just this church, Lord. God, we're not competing with the church down the road, how many members they have or how much money they collect. What we should all be competing for is for your glory and your honor. God, if we would just do that, Lord, if we would just come together as a body of believers, thanking you for being Lord, Lord, God Almighty tonight, holy, holy, holy. Father, that we would come, Lord, as they say, bound low before you and standing tall among men. God, that we would make a difference. God, oh, how it feels to feel your presence in us, Lord. That when you fill us with your spirit, Lord, that we can feel that peace and joy that passes all understanding. Father, we pray tonight for a country that we live in, Lord. We pray for our president, the vice president, we pray for Congress, Lord, and the Supreme Court, God. God, we know that there's, there's got to be some on them, Lord, somewhere that loves you, Lord, and is willing to stand up. Lord, we see all of the evil and the ones that want to go against you, Lord. God, we know that you're searching the heart of the people. We know that the devil is going to and fro wide open, Lord, trying to deceive as many as he can before it's too late. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would continue to minister to us, Lord, as we minister to others. Help us, Lord, as we, we try to be an example of what you want to be, us to be, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, for those that are sick and suffering tonight, Lord. God, we know tonight. Lord, I could name names, Lord, of people that would be here if they could because they love you. God, tonight, touch them that they don't feel like they're shut in and they're all alone and you don't care. God, lift them up and in truth and in spirit tonight, Lord, that they may rejoice also with us, Lord. Even though they're not here physically with us, Lord, they can be here spiritually with us, Lord, and knowing that you're Lord. 
Father, and I pray for the families that's lost loved ones all around, Lord. God, as they go through the most difficult times in their lives, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you would lift them up and encourage them, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, that, that your word would be proclaimed, Lord, throughout the world. That people may feel it, Lord. God, I know the reason why we're not experiencing revivals anymore. God, because we have we have gotten away from turning to you and saying, Lord, we need you. You are our only hope. You are the only salvation. Tonight, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would move in a mighty way. God, you speak to your children so many times in the word. Just as you speak against evil, you speak to your children in the things that we should do and how we should do them, Lord. It brings the results. As we read in Proverbs, Lord, and we saw that Solomon, Lord, what he did, that he had the prayers answered, and he knew it was from you. Father, Lord, tonight we ask you, Lord, that you hear our prayers, Lord. Help us that we would be humble, Lord, tonight as we come before you. Help us, Lord, that we would know that you're our only hope that we have tonight. You're the only strength. You said in your word here that you hear the prayers of the righteous. Father, we lift them up tonight. None of us in here are worthy. God, none of us in here tonight deserve to even be here. God, but it's what you've done that you sent your only son to die on the cross for us. Shed his blood, took the stripes that we may be healed. Lord, go with us, lead and guide direct us, Lord. As we leave this place, we ask you, Lord, that you would most of all forgive us where we failed you and come short. Lord, and if there's any sin that's committed in our lives, Lord, we ask you, Lord, and confess them to you, Lord, and ask you to remove them from our lives, move them from our hearts, move them from our souls, Lord, move them from our minds, Lord, that we may have the heart, Lord, that we can go out it's on the inside of us that only you can put. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.